Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to this month's professional development VC webinar. Uh, my name is Matan Jungman, and I co-lead the chapter together with Neil Hambley. Uh, and this chapter is here for everything that is non-technical that will advance your career. Uh, today we have Craig Pornell. Uh, thank you, Craig. With a great session called the Professional Professional Networking Toolbox. I personally really looking forward to it. Uh, if you're new to the chapter, you should know that we have a website, professionaldevelopment.sqlpass.org. It, it has updates on upcoming webinars as well as the previous webinar recordings. You can also send us an email if you have any requests or suggestions. Um, so with that, I think I will let Craig take the wheel. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them in the Q&A window and I will read them to Craig and he will answer. Uh, so over to you, Craig. Okay, thanks, Matan. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for everyone for uh, attending this um, this December day here for the past uh, virtual chapter. Uh, it's uh, actually been two years uh, since I've to this month exactly since I presented uh, before the past uh, professional development virtual chapter. Last time I was uh, did LinkedIn, and now uh, Matan had asked me to do uh, a replay of uh, the session that I did at uh, at the summit. Uh, this is entitled the Professional Networking Toolbox. Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, let me uh, advance my slide. Yeah, so a little bit. About, I'm a professional DBA, uh, as I would imagine uh, a lot of you are on the call today. Uh, I've been in IT for about 15 years. Um, I've been working with SQL Server for about 12 years. Um, most of, uh, very, very nearly all of my career has been back office infrastructure. Uh, I, I hail from Cleveland, Ohio area in the U.S. Uh, I'm very passionate about PASS. I've been a member of PASS since 2004, and uh, I'm, I'm very active on the, uh, the local SQL Saturday circuit uh, in the Midwest. You may, uh, if, if, uh, if you may have, I may have met you at the SQL Saturday. I, I try to do professional development topics as well at SQL Saturday, uh, and I've been a member of the Pro PASS program committee for the past four years. Uh, and there's my contact information. Okay, so you're probably wondering, um, those of you who are on the, on the, uh, the call today, uh, well, why, why is a, a DBA uh, out here talking about professional development topics? Well, you might be scratching your head, and, and that's a very valid question. Um, well, I'll tell you a story. Um, the story is, uh, uh, about six years ago, uh, this person here, this, uh, this nameless, faceless person at the back of the user group meeting, um, that was me. Uh, and I attended my local SQL Server user group, and uh, I knew probably maybe two people uh, at the user group. Uh, and I know, of course, I knew my coworkers that I worked with, but I didn't really know anybody uh, from a professional, uh, in, in uh, other uh, professionals uh, in, in the community. And so uh, I, I looked one day, I, re I, I looked at that, and I realized that uh, I had not, um, I didn't know enough people, and I needed to build a network. So I resolved to do that. Uh, and how I did that, I went out to the library. Uh, and I got a couple of books on uh, professional networking and, and how, to, how to do networking. Uh, and I read them, and I, I began to locate, go out and locate events to, to attend, and go out and meet people and, and make contacts uh, to build my professional my, my network. Uh, and I, obviously, I, I, um, I, I fell down a few times. Uh, I had some, some failures, um, but I picked myself back up and uh, kept moving and, and kept trying to build a network. And uh, so that, and that's why I'm here today, is to try and share with you, um, all of you, some of my lessons learned, some of my successes, some of my failures, uh, so that maybe you can uh, maybe not repeat some of the mistakes that I've made uh, in working with uh, professional development and, and building a, a strong network. So let's talk about uh, the agenda. This is um, uh, really the, we're going to talk a lot about tools, uh, about things that you can do to help you build uh, a network. Um, we're talking about why networking uh, as a soft skill, professional development soft skill. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, contacts. We're going to talk about business cards. There's been quite a bit of time uh, talking about LinkedIn uh, as a professional networking platform. We're going to talk about how to find uh, networking events uh, that we can attend. And uh, as, as members of the SQL Server PASS community, uh, we are very uh, blessed and very um, uh, it's very good for us because their PASS actually does quite a few events, uh, professional events uh, throughout the year, both online and uh, in person and uh, online uh, that we can use to meet um, other uh, professionals uh, similar to ourselves. And finally, we're going to talk about how to do introductions. 
uh, and how to bridge to other networks. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about um, about networking in general. Um, if you remember the old story, uh, I believe it's a children's tale um, the, about the tortoise and the hare, right? Uh, the story that, at least the story that I remember, was um, that there was a race and the tortoise was uh, uh, the hare was really really fast and ran off ahead and um, I, I think it, uh, it, it fell he fell asleep or something like that uh, and so then the tortoise was going very very slowly but uh, in the end the tortoise won the race uh, and the idea here is is that slow and steady uh, wins the race here in networking. Uh, these techniques um, are not something that is going to help your career next week or next month uh, or maybe not even next year. Um, it, it might take two to three to five years to uh, for you to see some of the benefits of investing in your own personal uh, network and building a strong network of contacts. Um, think of this as a long-term investment in your career uh, and that's really the lesson that I've learned from it and I hope that uh, you do as well. So let's talk about um, what is networking. A lot of people have um, different ideas about what networking is. Uh, so let's kind of cover um, some of the various uh, approaches to it. And um, Some people think that uh, you know, networking is about looking for a job. Um, well, that's partially true, um, but, but really the idea is uh, if you start networking when you're looking for a job, you're probably starting too late. Um, that's something that you really should be looking to do you know, long before you're looking for a job. Uh, it's kind of a derivative. Um, the other idea is that some people think that um, you know, networks, networking is about um, um, locating people to sell things to, right? Let's, let's go out and meet a bunch of people and uh, maybe they might be potential customers, right? So maybe we can sell something to them. Um, but that's, that's not exactly true either. Um, yes, that might be a possible derivative of meeting and people and making contacts uh, in your professional circles. Um, but in the, in the end, uh, networking is really about building contacts and meeting people uh, and the sharing of information and ideas uh, that are both fellow professionals in your area of specialty. And uh, I would assume that most of the people on this call are, are, have something to do with SQL Server uh, in some capacity. Uh, so we're all here uh, as professionals, uh, as database professionals, right? So we, we're, we're going to talk about networking with fellow database professionals. But those, of course, certainly aren't the only people we can network with. Uh, in, in, in the community, other IT pro professionals as well. So let's talk about a little bit about your influence. Um, your influence is really about what you know raised to the power of who you know. Uh, this is a really, really powerful concept. Um, there's, there's a couple of stories here. Um, really, I'll tell you a story. Uh, this is actually a true story. Um, First of all, um, what, what a comment. Most jobs, and, and we probably all instinctively know this, um, most jobs are actually never advertised. Uh, I think it's somewhere in the 60 to 70 percent range of jobs are never advertised. They're uh, filled through word of mouth, uh, people that you know, people uh, your business contacts, people you know through business. But uh, let me tell you a true story. So um, this is kind of a, a little bit about my network, and, and this is actually kind of a, um, uh, an interesting, this is actually two stories here. First of all, um, there is a, a, an event called Dog Food Con uh, that's based in the Columbus, Ohio area. Uh, it's, a, it's an IT conference, uh, similar to PASS, uh, obviously a lot smaller. But um, it, it's, I was reached out to by the organizers of this event um, probably about six months ago. And um, they reached out to me through my network. Um, my reputation or my influence had preceded me. Uh, and they, had, they were looking for somebody uh, that knew a lot of people in the SQL Server world uh, in the Ohio area, and um, they they reached out to me to participate in their event uh, as part of the uh, as a as a track chair basically. Um, so the lesson there is my my network had preceded me, uh, and they reached out through uh, making a, a mutual introduction between someone that we both knew, uh, mu a mutual contact. Uh, and so there's really two. Uh, uh, we're going to talk more about making uh, introductions later on. Um, so uh, this is idea of your influence, uh, building, uh, I'm just an average DBA, um, but I do know, I know quite a few people uh, both in the SQL Server world and uh, in, in other networks. So we're going to talk about other networks later. So let's talk about some, let's uh, kind of dive in and talk about some tools. Um, this is the toolbox. 
but uh, think of this, uh, under, take a, a minute, and not, not necessarily right this second, but um, as you, you try to analyze your network, um, and sit down someday and uh, get yourself a piece of paper and um, draw out something like what I've done here, um, approximately. Uh, think of this as a thought exercise. Understand who you know. Um, who do you know? Do you know people in the SQL Server community? Um, in your local SQL Server user group, perhaps? Um, other IT uh, organizations in your area, perhaps? Other, maybe perhaps .NET or SharePoint, for example. Uh, this is an example of my network. Uh, it's not complete, of course, but it, it's just an example. Um, I know a lot of coworkers, uh, a lot of former coworkers, of course, the SQL community, uh, and also a, a group called the Information Security Summit, which I'm also a part of, a, a member of. But it's, it's good to take, uh, take some time and understand kind of where you're at right now uh, to, to understand you know, where you want to build your network and strengthen your network in the future. Uh, another exercise, thought exercise that you can go into uh, is to uh, take some time and analyze your network by job title. And um, this is probably, if you're on LinkedIn, this is probably something you may want to use LinkedIn for um, to kind of sift through your network and understand um, some of the types of people that you know. Um, okay, how many CEOs do you know? Uh, I know, well, I don't know that many, maybe two or three. Uh, I know a few CIOs. I know maybe four or five CIOs. Um, but understand the people, the job titles uh, of the people that you that are members of your network, uh, and understand what is the reach of your network. Okay, uh, to kind of assess um, where you need to strengthen your network in terms of the, pe the kinds of people that you know and the communities in the people that you know. Uh, let's all right. Let's talk uh, about contacts organization a little bit. Understand that um, at, at the fundamental level, um, you're going to, um, obviously, you probably know a lot of people, uh, you, or may, hopefully you know some people, um, but uh, you, you need to keep your contacts organized. Uh, and this is kind of like good, uh, just kind of like good hygiene uh, in terms of contacts maintenance. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, but uh, your smartphone is actually a, a really, a, a very simple uh, organizer of, to keep your contacts, your, your Android device or your iPhone or whatever it is that you have. Um, that's a contacts organizer. Uh, and also, if you have you know, the free email accounts like Gmail or Hotmail, um, those are also good contacts um, organizing uh, technologies here. That's, that's just kind of a, a sample one that I made up here. Uh, but then down below here, uh, I've got uh, Outlook. Microsoft Outlook is a great tool for keeping your contacts organized. You can then um, you can organize your contacts in terms of uh, communities of, of the types of people that you know, and uh, you can tag them with various taglines uh, to keep track of, of your contacts. Outlook is a great tool for this type of thing. Uh, obviously, you, you pro in, in terms of work outlook versus personal outlook, you probably want to keep your, uh, your personal contacts on your own personal uh, computer hardware uh, as opposed to um, you know, work outlook and keeping your, your work as a personal uh, separate. Um, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is actually a, a very good contacts organizing tool uh, that not many people really realize the power of LinkedIn in terms of uh, as a contacts database. Okay. Um, so, for example, on each person, and this is just an example of, of what I pulled up, um, of somebody that I pulled up, uh, you, can, you can have underneath the persons on the contact information, you have the relationship of, of how you actually met that person. Uh, you can then devise tags uh, to, to, to categorize your contacts, uh, and then you can also note, uh, add additional notes about perhaps you know, how you met or, or uh, um, special information to help you remember uh, this person. Uh, and then the contact info that itself. This is, this is built right into the fabric of LinkedIn. Uh, very powerful technique, uh, very powerful uh, design. Um, as, um, and, also, another thing that people don't realize uh, in, as part of LinkedIn, in terms of contacts and connections, maintenance and management, uh, a lot of us are probably DBAs. Um, but you can, oh, so we, as DBAs, we probably like to back up and restore things, right? <laughs> so, um, um, so I'll show you that uh, in advanced setting, you can actually back up your LinkedIn contacts and, uh, to a CSV file, or I believe you can back it up to a, a VCF, which is a virtual business card file. Uh, you can back this up to your local file system. 
Uh, it's under your advanced settings. It's called Export LinkedIn Connections. So that's something that not a lot of people know about. But uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, and perhaps you may want to uh, you know, use that to export and, and then maybe load those into uh, your Outlook, from your personal Outlook, for example. Uh, something to keep in mind. All right, so let's take some time and talk about business cards as a, as a networking tool. A business card is a tool. Um, whenever I attend a networking event or, or really just any IT pro event, uh, whether it be my local SQL Server user group meeting or uh, any, any other event, I always have my business cards with me. Um, and, and this is the idea that um, it's a way to exchange contact information. And, um, and I, always, uh, the, the, I always say, do you have a card? I always ask people, do you have a business card? Um, and I would say, hey, offer my card up. Uh, here's my card. Do you have one? Um, and understand that there's lots of, uh, even if you don't have uh, business cards where you work uh, through your employer, um, you can actually go and get your own cards printed up. Uh, there are a lot of uh, sites out there that will do it for a very uh, reasonable amount of money. Um, the, the, the two that come to mind really are uh, Vistaprint is, is one. Uh, they're relatively reasonable. I believe their, their first um, order is uh, a very small amount. I believe you have to just have to pay the shipping or something like that. Uh, Moo.com is another one. I'm a big fan of Moo cards. Um, I just popped up network uh, difficulties. Can everybody hear me? Matan? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly, Craig. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm a big fan of MooCards, uh, Moo.com. Um, over in the right-hand corner there, you can see uh, you can you can customize every aspect of your card, uh, and um, I, I get a lot of uh, comments on my cards. So definitely uh, uh, investigate this. They're they're a relatively reasonable price uh, to get your own uh, cards. Um, and understand when you when you look at business cards, uh, understand the context and promotion. Right. So if I look here. Um, I can see um, who, who are we promoting here, right? We're, we're not, uh, my name is obviously very small. Um, we're promoting the company, right, versus myself. Obviously, if you're a consultant, you're probably promoting yourself all the time anyway. Uh, here's another example of, uh, of, of Moo cards. You, you can actually print uh, images uh, on the front of the back. You can include various information. So definitely, uh, I encourage you to uh, explore those options. Um, Another thing that people don't um, don't usually have with them is blank business cards. Why would I want to have? Why would I want to carry blank cards? I usually usually will carry uh, one or two blank business cards with me, uh, and the reason why I do that is when I meet other IT pros or other uh, SQL Server professionals who do not have a business card, I give them the blank card and I say, okay, um, you know, write down your, your your name and your your email address or your your phone number, whatever your contact information, uh, on this card. So at that point now, there are no barriers um, to not exchanging contact information. So I definitely encourage everyone to have a few uh, blank cards as well to carry with you. Uh, very, very, uh, very cheap to get them, uh, and, and you just carry a couple extra with you. Um, another um, part handling tip. Yes, is there a question? Uh, yeah, uh, um, Matt asked about uh, the MOO codes. Can you uh, repeat that? Or? Maybe uh, tell us the, the, the web address of the, of the Oh, site. yes. Uh, absolutely. Here, I'll, I'll go back. Um, I'll put it, actually, I'll uh, type it here. It is um, moo.com, www.moo.com. Uh, and I, 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 I'm just a big fan of, of them. They make uh, very, very high-quality cards, and uh, you, can, you can customize every aspect of the card. Uh, and, and definitely, um, people will, will remember you if you have blue cards. Does that answer your question? Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so a card handling tip uh, that not many people realize is uh, when, when you attend conferences like the PASS Summit or any other uh, IT conference or business conference, um, usually you'll have uh, some sort of a, a name badge. And the name badge will usually have multiple pockets in it, uh, either the front or the back. Um, but one thing you can do is you can then um, use those pouches to organize your personal business cards and the business cards of the people that you meet. 
uh, and, and then to keep them separate. Uh, and that's why usually why those, those badge holders usually have multiple pockets in them is for those types of things. So just another tip uh, in your, your toolbox of, uh, of information. Another thing that you may want to, uh, if you're attending a conference, um, you may want to do uh, every day, especially a multi-day event like, the, for example, the PASS Summit, um, you may want to each day, at the end of each day, you may want to uh, write down a note uh, or two about where you met this person or what event you met this person at or what session you met the person at. Because what will happen is you'll come back from uh, at, at the end of the event and you will have, um, you'll have a stack of cards and you won't remember anything about anybody. But if you take notes each day, uh, and, and then that is a, a definitely thing, something that will help you jog your memory. Because you, usually when you attend uh, these types of events, you meet lots and lots of interesting people and um, it helps you remember. So that's usually what I will do. Um, tools, uh, smartphone, smartphone networking. Um, and, and this is actually, uh, these two slides are actually brand new. Uh, they are not in uh, what was done at the summit uh, because these are actually lessons learned uh, from the summit. Um, is that your smartphone, whether that be an Android device or iPhone or whatever it is you have, um, it's a great tool. Um, I have found that um, probably about 40 to 50 percent of the people that I met at the summit um, did, for whatever reason, did not have business cards. So um, this is another way to lower that barrier to, um, to, to network with these people that don't have business cards. So um, you can jot down their contact information uh, in your smartphone and just in your notes, uh, your notes application. Uh, all, all the smartphones have it, uh, that type of thing. And basically as a way for you to remember who you met, even if they don't have a card, you can still write down their contact information and um, to be able to remember them uh, as well. So that's the first tip. Uh, the second tip is um, use your smartphone camera. Smartphone camera to the rescue, as I call it there. Um, you can use your camera to take pictures of people's badges, or they can take pictures of your badges. So even if you don't have business cards, you can still uh, retain that contact information of the person that you met and talked with at whatever that event was. Uh, and then you can then reach out to that person uh, in the future. I found that to be very, very helpful uh, this year at the PASS Summit. Um, all right, so let's talk about uh, locating some in-person networking events uh, that we, we may want to attend uh, to meet people. Uh, so let's talk, talk about and understand that there are different types of networking events. Um, they might be something um, for example, we might have a, a general business networking event. And uh, this type of thing is typically would be like your, your local chamber of commerce or your local business boosters event. Uh, typically, those are put on by those types of organizations. Um, and it's a, it's a general event where if you attend this event, uh, you'll be meeting or you, you could potentially be meeting um, people that are that do all types of business people. Okay, not necessarily IT pros. Okay, and that's okay. Um, just uh, set your expectations appropriately. Uh, and actually, that, that I, I find value there, uh, that you may be meeting people um, that aren't necessarily in IT. It's a way to diversify um, the, the types of people that you know and, and that, you have, uh, that, you're, that you have in your contact database. Um, uh, other types of events, more narrowly focused. Uh, or I, I call this IT general or uh, other tech industry, um, whether that be um, whether that be perhaps uh, a local .NET user group or a local SharePoint uh, user group or any 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 IT uh, event, uh, whether that be, you know a local conference or a SQL Saturday, uh, SharePoint Saturday, those types of things. Uh, you're, you're, the types of people that you're going to be meeting at those events are probably fellow IT pros like yourself. Okay, and, and that's great, um, that are doing things with other than SQL Server specifically. And then finally, more, more focused, uh, the most narrowly focused uh, type of event is uh, like, for example, your local user group, if you're a database professional, uh, your local user group, uh, the odds are the people you're going to be meeting and talking with at your local user group are uh, fellow database professionals like yourself or perhaps at a SQL Saturday event. Um, 
the, that's the narrowest level of focus. Um, some other um, some ways to meet uh, or to locate uh, types of tech events that you might be interested in. The point here is uh, over on meetup.com is a great uh, site for that type of thing. Uh, I typed in uh, business networking just as an example here within 50 miles of Cleveland, Ohio. You can do the same thing uh, for wherever, wherever you live. Um, and I got lots of different uh, variations of types of organizations. But then I went and I typed in tech or IT, for example, within 50 miles of Cleveland. And you can see that I got a lot of IT related focused events that I could potentially attend. Uh, if you're into big data or uh, other types of databases, there's lots of different, generally there's lots of different IT events in your area. So basically just use meetup.com as a vehicle to do that. Um, there's a, there's, there, there may or may not be a local tech event sites in your area. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, the ClevelandTechEvents.com is, a, is a, a local site run by a friend of mine. Um, I know there's a site, uh, uh, I believe it's called Tech Orlando. Uh, check it out. Talk to some, some of your friends in the IT uh, pro uh, who are IT pros. Ask them if, the, if you know of any good local events sites about uh, in your area, your own geographic area. Uh, another one that you may want to look at is communitymegaphone.com. That uh, was developed by some, uh, some Microsoft evangelists. Uh, that's mainly uh, uh, in-person events. And you can see here's just the uh, example screenshot uh, that, of uh, local events that you may want to check out. You can even add your own event uh, completely for free. Yeah, a another um, a suggestion is to find events in your area is um, over on, on LinkedIn. Uh, find the local tech groups uh, where most of the IT pros have joined in your area and uh, then go and basically look at the groups and look at who's posting what and look for events because usually events are promoted uh, on those groups uh, because that's the way they, they basically they get free advertising uh, through the LinkedIn groups. So definitely check that, that out. Uh, another event, local past chapters. Uh, hopefully you have a local uh, past user group uh, in your area. Uh, definitely attend that if you, if you can. Uh, it's a great way to meet other um, SQL Server professionals like yourself uh, as well. You can go to sqlpass.org uh, SQL uh, and look, look up for the local chapters. Um, some tips on uh, preparing for an in-person event. Um, generally, I will, as I mentioned, I will always have my business cards with me. Uh, I also will generally have um, breath mints as well. Um, your mileage may vary if you're a germ freak. You may want to bring some, some hand sanitizer, for example. You'll probably be meeting lots of people. I will generally have a notebook, uh, some sort of a notebook and a pen or pencil uh, as well. Those are usually my, my standard uh, toolbox of things that I bring with me when I attend a, a user group or a networking event. Dress for the event. This is something that uh, you want to probably want to follow based on the type of event that you're attending. If you're attending an event, usually, like a, for example, like a SQL Saturday, you're probably not going to be wearing a suit, uh, very unlikely. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of the, the folks on the left there. Those are uh, that was actually taken to the SQL Saturday a couple of years ago. But the, you probably want to um, dress for success. I always follow the dress for success motto, and generally I will dress just up a, a slight notch uh, based on the uh, the audience of, of who may be attending at the event. So just keep that in mind. Another thing that you, you uh, is definitely encouraged to do is to review the attendee list. And if you're a member of SQL Saturday or if you, you've attended SQL Saturdays in the past, uh, you, you will see over on the right-hand side there is a, a tab for, uh, for networking. And, and uh, the reason why that's there, and this is actually on the, on the left-hand side here, this is actually um, the, the attendee list from the summit from uh, just this past year. Good. Uh, most networking events will post the actual attendee list. Um, just usually the you know the first name and last name of the persons that are attending, uh, if they opt in. Usually, the reason why you want to do this is because um, you can then go and, and take some time, take you know 15 minutes, a half hour, hour, uh, and review the attendee list uh, a couple days in advance before uh, before you attend. And the reason why is because you may, you may notice or recognize names of people 
that you know of by reputation that you specifically want to meet and, and uh, make their acquaintance at the event. Uh, also, you may run into or notice names on this list uh, of people that are a member, currently members of your network that um, you want to perhaps reconnect with uh, and, and maybe take a few minutes and, and catch up with them. Um, it is a, is a great way to uh, have this strategy and, and build a small list of people who you want to connect with. Uh, so a, a good good networking events will definitely uh, publicly list those events. Uh, and this is uh, what you also may want to do is build this list. This is an example of me, my list from the past summit from 2014. Uh, there were some people there that I wanted to uh, definitely wanted to reach out to and talk to um, for various reasons. So definitely, uh, really, it, it's about doing your homework. Just do, take some time, do your homework before an event. Uh, and, and, and find out what you the, the kinds of acquaintances and, and what you want to talk to the various people about. Um, uh, Craig? Yes. Yeah. We have two questions, or one question and one uh, comment. Uh, Andy asks, do you use Evernote Hello? It's a smartphone app, and if so, have you found it useful? Uh, the question was, do I use, is it Evernote Hello? Yeah. Um, no, I do not use Evernote Hello, but I, I had never heard of that. For this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from what I see, is uh, they say remembering people is hard. Evernote Hello makes it easy by creating a rich, pausable history of individuals, encounters, and shared experiences. So, uh, thank you for sharing so, that. Yeah, and uh, Rick also mentions that you can also use the NFC feature to share contacts uh, info with smartphones. Uh, thank you for sharing that as well. That yeah. was the, the NFC feature? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I did not know about, about that as well. Thank you uh, for that. I will definitely look that up and, and do a little research on that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and, and one thing um, that I, I try to get into the habit of doing is whenever I attend an event like the PASS Summit or, or a SQL Saturday uh, or any event, uh, I, I will try to uh, take a little bit of time beforehand and review my network, uh, generally on LinkedIn, uh, looking for uh, basically uh, people who have changed jobs for whatever reason, um, photograph changes, picture changes. Uh, sometimes people will, will change their publicly um, uh, viewable photographs uh, from, from time to time. Uh, the other reason why I, I try to review my network is uh, to reassociate the name with the face. Um, everyone work you know, we're, we're all human. Um, sometimes we're, our memories aren't so good, um, and sometimes we may not um, we don't reconnect that name with that face. Uh, and that's really important when you're attending events uh, to be able to associate the name with the face. So I, I, I try to do my homework uh, and, and do that. Also, any updates in status. Uh, for example, if, if someone's embarking on a, a different project or a different uh, career path or something like that, uh, at least you'll be able to. You'll, at least you'll just know about it, and you can. It's something that you can talk about with the person. Hey, you know, I've heard you're going off into a, you know, big data world or something like that. Uh, how's that going for you? Uh, it's just a way to to um, to interact with the person. Um, one thing that uh, you also may want to have is your elevator speech. Um, is it, this is really a you know 10 to 20 second long speech? It not doesn't have to be a you know a whole paragraph or anything, but uh, hi, I'm Craig Pernell. I'm a database professional. I spent most of my time working with SQL Server, and I'm thrilled about PASS and SQL Saturdays, and I love to meet other database professionals like myself. That's my, that's my elevator speech. Uh, it doesn't have to be very long. Just a couple sentences. Uh, polish it, memorize it, and just uh, so that you can just roll right off your, uh, about what you're about and when you meet, these, meet various people. You can say your elevator speech. Um, the event. Um, try and get there early um, so that you can basically kind of get the lay of the land, so to speak. Um, the, if, if the attendee, another tip, if, uh, if the event does not post the attendee list um, for whatever reason, uh, we were talking about that a few minutes ago, um, a trick is to uh, scan the sign-in sheet. Uh, there, most events very, very nearly always will have a sign-in sheet, and you can take a minute and scan that uh, to see the list of uh, names of people who at least had signed up for the event. Uh, that way, it might even give you just a few minutes head start on trying to remember, um, basically, to reassociate those names with the people that you know to be in your network. 
Uh, if you're a little nervous, if you've never attended uh, these types of events before, uh, if, especially if it's a true networking event as opposed to something like a user group, uh, just be a wallflower and watch the fun and uh, watch how it's done. Uh, and, and, uh, or perhaps even offer to help out with the, at the registration table. That's another tip. Uh, that's a way to meet other people and, as they come through the registration line. Uh, and also, this is a networking event. Don't forget to bring your smile. Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll take uh, just a minute here and, and kind of go through a little bit of body language. Um, probably a lot of us probably already uh, instinctively know this, but I'm going to kind of uh, codify it a little bit, make it a little bit more formal. Um, so you can see here, um, this is uh, two people, my, my generic Microsoft um, uh, imaginary PowerPoint figures here. <laughs> um, th these two people here are having a conversation, a, a direct face-to-face -face conversation. Um, the people here that, that are depicted here, this is kind of like a three people in a triangular shaped uh, conversational format. Um, you can see that they're not really, there's not really an opening here for someone to come and uh, join into this conversation. This is kind of a, a, a closed conversation. Uh, and then finally, here, this is a little bit different in that um, there's three people, and they're in roughly a triangular shape format, but you can see that there's an opening here. Uh, and so this person uh, could then potentially come up and join into the conversation and uh, attend. Uh, there's an opening for that, a fourth person to join the conversation. Can I join you? And then finally, um, we have an example where uh, there are people that are uh, kind of in a loose, a very loose formation. Uh, they're, they're not really talking about anything very intently, uh, probably just a lot of small talk. Uh, and this is potentially an opportunity for someone to uh, potentially come up and uh, join in, uh, in the, the small talk with uh, these people that are kind of in a loose formation. So let's talk about a few conversation starters. Um, a lot of this is uh, real basic stuff. Hey, where are you from and what do you do? Especially if you're at an event like a SQL Saturday or the Pass Summit. Um, what technology do you work with? Um, uh, probably most of us do something, uh, some sort of, of way with SQL Server. Um, but you know, tell, me, tell me what area that you, you focus mostly on. Um, have you ever been to this user group before? Or have you ever been to this event before? Um, also, a good question, just out of curiosity, why do you attend networking events? Um, what do you like about what you do? And how did you get started about, how did you get started in that direction? People usually like to talk about themselves. So if you can just ask them a few questions to get them started to talk about themselves, that's a great way to build conversation. And then finally, who can I help you meet? Uh, some other tips. Um, mix speaking and listening. Um, probably about 50-50 uh, is usually a good uh, rule of thumb. Always look for things in common with the other um, with the other people. What what can we what can we find in common that we can talk about? Uh, I'll actually pay attention with the other person. And uh, also, very very important tip: never ever talk uh, politics or religion. Um, you're you're probably going to offend somebody with whatever your viewpoint is. Uh, so just stay away from that. Uh, the, the really the best thing to talk about is light tech talk. Uh, we're all IT pros. Hey, what do you think about the new um, Windows 10 you know, interface that, that Microsoft came out with? That's a great topic starter. Or, or what do you think about big data? And, or are you doing anything with big data? Um, those types of things are just, uh, the current IT topics all just work great. You know, maybe um, uh, take a minute and, and scan uh, the local, or your Information Week, or uh, Tech Target, or any of, the, any of the IT media sites, uh, and find out what's the, what are the latest IT buzzwords. Uh, and those are great things to talk about. Now, if all else fails, use the lowest common denominator. Talk about the event itself or the weather. Uh, the, lo the weather is obviously that's something that we can always talk about. Oh, it's cloudy outside, right, or, or, or whatever. Uh, what do you think about the event? What do you think about the speaker that's speaking at, at the, uh, the user group tonight or, or something like that? Those are all great topics. Um, remembering names. This is, this is something that's, that's really hard, um, and I, I struggle with this one as well. And, and Probably a lot of the people that I've met and talked to struggle with this as well. Try to at least remember the person's first name um, and use the person's name in a sentence. And, and what company do you work for, uh, Bob? Uh, while you are, uh, as an example, while you are actually looking at that person, um, and this is something that 
uh, practice, practice, practice. The, the more you do this, you actually get better at remembering names the more you, you work with it. Uh, that's what I have found. Uh, and, and there are lots of, if you Google on, um, there are lots of different ways to remember people's names, like mnemonics and those types of things. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting this is the only way. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of better ways to do it. Um, other people have different strategies. So your, your mileage may vary. Um, different ways to end the conversation. This is something that uh, it sometimes can be awkward. Uh, this is a, a friend of mine, Don Gabor. Uh, he is a, a big fan of some of these tips. So these are, uh, these are his tips. Uh, but I want to re restate them because they're so good and they're very well done. Restate something interesting that the person said. It was nice meeting you, John. Let's stay in touch. Uh, I enjoyed our chat. Smile, make con eye contact, shake hands and say that person's name. That's a clear signal that this conversation is about to end. Name or John, it was great meeting you. Bye for now. Those are some excellent ways to end the conversation. I have always found that ending a conversation uh, is, is sometimes, that's one of the things that I have struggled with as well uh, in my networking uh, experience. All right, let's talk about following up. So we've, we've gone to a, a, an event, a, a user group or something like that, and we've, we've met a few people. How do we follow up with the person? Uh, generally what I will do is I will, um, it's generally recommended that you follow up within 24 hours. Um, and generally what I will do is if I got a business card or if I, uh, I got a name and I put a note in my, on my smartphone or whatever, um, I will generally send a LinkedIn invitation or, or connection request to that person uh, usually the next morning. The reason why I say the 24 hours is, is a general good rule is because um, over time uh, we, we will we'll, we'll, we'll forget the name first and then we'll slowly start to forget the face. So we want to make that connection before um, before that time expires. Now, in an event like the PASS Summit, for example, uh, if you're in a multi-day uh, uh, conference or, or something like that, that, that it's several days, uh, understand that, that the 24-hour uh, suggestion is, is you can relax that, uh, in that um, everyone else is in the same boat as you. They're exhausted every night and um, they're busy. You're usually, these types of events, you're generally busy uh, 18 hours a day. Uh, generally, I would say it's uh, within a week or so after a major event ends, like the past summit. Uh, it, it's generally a good time to follow up within a week or so. Uh, let's talk about LinkedIn a little bit. Uh, LinkedIn is a lot, of th a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, a lot of people think it's your online resume. Yes, that's correct. Uh, it, it can be. Uh, but it's also a lot of other things in addition to your resume. It's really a contacts database. Uh, and we talked about that for uh, a little bit earlier. It's also, I like to call it the online water cooler. Uh, it's a way that you can go and, and, and connect and interact with other people who have your interests uh, and you can send messages, uh, uh, participate in the groups feature of LinkedIn, uh, offer up your, your thoughts and comments on various topics uh, and interact with other people online in, uh, in, as part of LinkedIn. Uh, it's also a jobs board and search engine. This has really become more popular over the past two to three years. LinkedIn is uh, is now competing with the job boards or the jobs boards, um, and, and so they've kind of entered that space as being a, a pure networking platform. Uh, it's also a, a, a CRM uh, sales and marketing tool. You can use it to uh, contact and reach research, reach out to and research people that are potential customers of yours. Uh, and, but finally, it's the world's largest professional network. Um, the degrees of separation, uh, this is something that uh, people may not uh, readily realize, but when you actually connect with somebody on LinkedIn um, and they ex accept your request, you're connected, um, then you are then a, a first level connection with that person. You are directly connected. Uh, and you may notice that uh, other people that are second level connections uh, that are Basically, a, a second level connection is someone who is basically a friend of a friend or a connection of a connection. So they are, they're not directly connected to you, um, but they know somebody that you know. You have a mutual acquaintance in common. And then uh, a third level connection is a connection of a connection of a connection. And it used to be that um, 
used to be that the LinkedIn groups feature, whenever you joined a group in LinkedIn, uh, it used to be that you automatically became third level connections with everyone who is a, a member of that group in addition to yourself. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, unfortunately, has removed that feature uh, in, within the past several months. And I don't know why they did that, but they, for whatever reason, they removed that, that uh, functionality. So just something to keep in mind. Um, understand a little bit about your LinkedIn profile. It's, it's really important to try and get that profile to 100%. Uh, they'll, they'll show you a, a little thermometer uh, type gauge that shows you know, where, your, where your profile's at. Uh, and the reason why it's important to get it to 100% is because um, in, in, in LinkedIn's secret sauce, or, or secret programming um, code, uh, basically people, when you do a search for somebody, let's say a database professional in Atlanta, Georgia, for example, uh, I just made that up, um, people that pay LinkedIn money so much a month, uh, whatever plan you have with LinkedIn, they will, they will always be at the top of the, uh, you know, at the top of the search results. Uh, and then below that, below paying customers, uh, LinkedIn will have people whose profile is at 100%. And then below that, uh, at the bottom of the search results, are people whose profile is not at 100%. So it's important always to try and get that to 100% whenever you can. Also, um, don't just post your resume. Uh, that's a, a common mistake to make. Um, you you want to write your profile um, as your online professional image. So it's not just, so yes, your resume is certainly uh, a contributor or something that you want to use as a source for your profile, but it's not the only thing. Um, absolutely invest the time in your profile. Take something, take some time and work on your profile. It's not something that you're going to be able to do in, in one night or even in a weekend. Um, when I really, my profile is in desperate need of, of rewrite, um, but when I worked on mine two or three years ago, um, I spent probably two or three months working on it uh, over, you know, Saturday mornings, Saturday afternoons, that type of thing, or at night, a couple hours a night. It's, it's, a, it's an evolutionary process. It's not revolutionary. Uh, also, a, a poor profile uh, sends also sends a message. Uh, if you don't, if you just post a couple of jobs up there uh, and you don't invest a little bit, at least a little bit of time, that sends a message as well uh, that, that that you're not interested in that. Also, a picture. Uh, absolutely, have a picture uh, up there uh, of yourself. It, it should be. It's recommended that it is a headshot, um, and it, hopefully, if you can have a professional photographer take it. Uh, if not, if, if you, you, at least if you have a friend with a, uh, a DSLR camera, a, a semi-professional camera, uh, take that uh, as well. And even if you don't have a picture, at least if you have a smartphone, um, something is better than nothing. Uh, let's put it that way. So uh, definitely try and get a headshot in there if at all possible. Um, also, claim your custom URL. This is um, uh, something that's not readily apparent. Um, but obviously we live in you know the Google world that we live in. Everybody can search on each other. Um, if you have a strong URL, LinkedIn.com slash in slash whatever your name is, okay, uh, that's my custom URL. That's a strong uh, uh, URL. Uh, if it has pub in it and it has a bunch of numbers, um, that's a weak URL. Uh, and you will be competing with other people with your name uh, in the search results. So definitely uh, something to keep in mind. Um, now, we'll talk about rules of engagement here. A, a, lot, and a lot of this is subjective. Um, th these are some of my guidelines that I personally follow. Your mileage may vary. Um, there, are, there is no hard and fast rules here. This is, this is a lot of um, personal preference. Um, what usually what I will do uh, in terms of LinkedIn, uh, I will keep it professional. Um, I won't generally will not network with family members, uh, friends, or neighbors on LinkedIn. It's a, it's a very, very small uh, list of people, of friends that I'm connected with on LinkedIn. Um, generally, I will request or I'll connect with them on Facebook. I'll say, hey, let's go connect on Facebook uh, as well. I try to keep it professional. And what I mean by professional, I mean um, anybody that I have done business with or anybody who is a member, a, a fellow um, DBA or a fellow member of PASS, Anybody who does the same thing that I do, right? Uh, working with databases in some capacity, consultants, managers, it, I consider that to be a professional um, association. We have common interests, and that's a valid reason to connect with somebody. 
Um, Lion, uh, Lion is a uh, kind of an interesting one. Lion is, uh, is short for LinkedIn Open Networker. And what a lion does basically is, and I'm not suggesting that you be a lion, uh, I just want to tell you what it is. Um, basically, LinkedIn, a lion will connect with anybody, anywhere, uh, anytime, no questions asked. Their goal is to get uh, as many connections as possible. Um, LinkedIn's official public um, policy is that you should only network with people that you actually know. Uh, I, personally, I think that's I think that's too restrictive. I think you should probably be somewhere in the middle. I'm I am somewhere in the middle between the two. Uh, I will generally connect with uh, IT pros uh, in my area, in my community, people who do the same types of things that I do. I'm happy to connect with anybody on the call today. Send me a, a message, uh, and I'll, I will actually show you the connection request here in another minute or two. Uh, but understand that you you yourself decide on your own policy, uh, how who and how you're going to want to connect with people. Um, uh, this this came up. Um, I've done this session quite a few times. Um, I put my I put my email address in right at the front in the the top of my sec on my connection information. Um, and the reason why I do this is that I want to remove all barriers to communication, so that if someone wants to contact me directly via email, uh, they can. Um, but but some people are concerned about privacy, and I, I'm I'm certainly cognizant of that. Um, I understand that if you're concerned about that from a private privacy perspective, I, I totally understand. Um, some people are, are less comfortable with that. Um, so there are, there's no right or wrong answer there. Uh, it, it's really a personal uh, decision. Um, here's a sample connection request that uh, this is actually somebody I met at a, at a recent event um, just before the past summit. Um, but uh, LinkedIn used to be, I'll, I'll, I'll make a comment here, used to be that you had uh, groups you could you used to be able to connect. If you were a fellow group member, you could connect to that person uh, via LinkedIn. LinkedIn has actually removed the group's function or uh, functionality from uh, to be able to send a connection request. Uh, I don't know why they did that, uh, but it is. I think it's unfortunate. Uh, so really, the 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 lowest currently the low. If you're not a direct, you don't work directly with the person. You can connect as a friend. You can say friend. That's the lowest common denominator, and that's how I've been doing it um, uh, as well. But, but definitely, uh, it's highly recommended uh, that you send a personal note um, to that person anytime you make a connection request uh, to a person. Uh, address the person, uh, indicate a sentence or two uh, as to why you want to connect with them, remind them maybe how we met. Um, Anybody who wants to send me a connection request that's on the meeting today, just make a note. Hey, I was in your your webcast at the uh, the, the Prof Dev uh, event. I'd like to connect with you. I'm happy to connect with any, any, anybody and everybody who's on the call today. Uh, just remind me how I know you, uh, and re or maybe remind me that we're fellow members of PATS or we're fellow members of uh, a specific SQL Server user group or or some sort of professional designation. So um, always definitely uh, have a personal touch. There. That that's really really important. Um, uh, and, and also, this is not required. This is completely optional. Some people will do this. Uh, I try and do it um, when I when I can. Um, but there are, obviously there are only 24 hours in the day, and sometimes I don't have time to respond to everybody personally. Um, but some people will send a personal message back. Um, this is an example of one that I had, uh, and, and uh, Donna Bell Santos. Uh, as an MVP from um, uh, Canada, Vancouver, Canada area, uh, she had connected, or I connected with her uh, earlier in the year, and she had sent me a message back. Uh, some people do this. Uh, it's it, again, it's not required. It's completely optional, um, but but it's a nice uh, personal touch. All right, some other tips uh, for LinkedIn. Um, find the most successful people that you know and go and connect with them on LinkedIn because they usually know lots and lots of interesting people. Uh, go look at their profiles. Look at how they built their profile. Uh, it's a great way to uh, steal idea, basically steal ideas from um, people who have really well written profiles. Use those as ideas to build and inject into your profile. Um, also, make strategic connections wherever possible. Uh, this idea of a hub uh, or power networker, people who um, their goal is to, to network with a lot of people. And, not, and I'm not suggesting lions, I'm suggesting people who are leaders in their community, IT community people, uh, members of uh, leadership of PASS, uh, community influencers, those types of things. 
uh, SQL Server MVPs, um, any any MVPs, people who uh, go out and spend the time in our, our communities, our IT tech, uh, technical communities, visionaries, and also uh, just leaders in general, other seasoned IT pros. Um, some other social media uh, as a tool. Uh, I would certainly, Facebook is the largest uh, networking platform on the planet. So I would be uh, replete if I did not uh, bring it up as a as a networking um, option. It certainly is, absolutely. Um, I don't, personally, I, I don't have, um, I think LinkedIn brings more value to the table uh, in terms of professional networking. Uh, but just understand that it is an option available to you. Uh, Twitter is, is great. Uh, Twitter is uh, obviously uh, the SQL Server community uh, is very, very strong on Twitter. There are a lot of um, a strong presence. There's a lot of good interaction on Twitter uh, between database, all of us database professionals. Um, there are various hashtags you can follow. The SQL Pass hashtag I would encourage. Uh, SQL Help, SQL Server. Obviously, Summit 14 is, is come and gone, but uh, uh, I would suggest the Summit 15 uh, hashtag is something that you may want to start looking at next year. Um, all right, so let's talk about introductions. And this is, um, this is kind of an advanced topic, um, but I, I definitely wanted to, to mention it here and talk about it for a minute or two, um, because this is something that um, comes up from time to time. Uh, this is not something that I do very often. This is easy, right? Well, not necessarily. Um, this is, the, the, when I'm talking about introduction here, what I mean by this is um, making, uh, knowing two people in your professional network Okay, that don't know each other, and you know you know them, but they don't know each other. Okay, and the idea is to introduce those two people, if if and only if there you feel that there is strategic value by doing that. Uh, and I'll give you I'll give you some examples of that. Um, I'll give uh, one example that I had I made in their introduction is um, a conference that I'm uh, uh, affiliated with. The uh, one of the leaders there. Um, there was someone who was very senior in uh, security consulting, uh, and I made an introduction there, and uh, because they both had a mutual interest, but they did not know each other. Uh, that's an example of how I made a, a strategic connection. Um, and th again, this is people who do not know each other. All right, so let's go through just a few, a few of the do's and don'ts. Good introductions uh, are genuine. Um, and thoughtful and considered. We're, we don't want to just randomly do this, okay? Uh, generally, I will only do maybe one to two introductions a year, uh, or as I see fit, as as there's as I see need need there. This is not something that we do, you know, every day. Uh, we're always going to use goodwill and good intention. And I, what I will always do is, uh, generally, I will always connect or, and talk with each person, uh, or email each person personally. Uh, confidentially at first and explain why I want to meet, introduce you to this other person and here's why I see value in there in, in this um, and explain your intentions and ask if it's okay the person may not be uh, from, uh, comfortable with that so um, definitely do that uh, and, and contact each person privately first and then also follow up uh, when you make the introduction I'm going to show you an example in just one second uh, here's an example of, uh, obviously I changed the names here, um, but the, the general idea is um, I'm introducing you, hi Lisa, I'm introducing you to Jerry Berry, uh, the application development manager at AppSaurus. He's participating in a uh, uh, an inter university uh, uh, outreach event for students. Uh, Lisa is a professor at a uh, university and is organizing this event. Uh, she should be able to get us more information on the specifics. Um, and then here's a follow-up. Uh, this person then followed up. Again, the, the names have been changed and kind of munched around a little bit. Um, why is this important? We want to build goodwill in our network. Um, understand that both members of these networks are going to remember you as having brought them together. Uh, some pitfalls on introductions. Lack of follow-up uh, from one or, one or more parties. Always follow up. Very, very important. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. We're, all, we're almost out of time. So, um, Understand. I'll just talk maybe one sentence about bridging to other networks. Uh, it's important that uh, uh, if you can diversify and make contacts in other networks, because it's a way for you to to diversify. Not only being a database professional, but knowing people in uh, information security summit. For I personally I, I know a lot of people through the information security summit and DogFoodCon who I've become involved with. Um, 
some pitfalls uh, that I have found, not following up is a big, a big thing. Uh, forgetting names and faces. This is certainly not, not uh, a practice makes perfect here. Uh, and also, having the right, wrong attitude. Um, if you remember what uh, President Kennedy said many, many years ago, uh, ask not what you can do for, or what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Uh, that's very, that's a valid thought mindset uh, when it comes to networking. Absolutely. Uh, and then finally, a handwritten note. If someone does you a favor, uh, definitely send them a handwritten note. A handwritten note always, always trumps everything because you actually took the time uh, and to write something with your own hand um, to thank them for whatever they did, and, and that person will remember you for a very, very long time. Okay, um, just kind of a wrap up. So we talked about some tools. Uh, we talked about business cards. We talked about contacts organization. We talked about LinkedIn. Uh, we talked about making some introductions and bridging into other networks. Okay, uh, any questions? Uh, no, no, no other questions. Um, thank you very much, Craig. It was a lot of fun. Oh, there's another. Uh, there is a question. Uh, let me read that. Uh, uh, so, someone says LinkedIn is great, but what if you are employed and looking for work? I don't want my employer to know I am looking. Um, the question was, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, and I, I don't want my employer to know. Uh, my activity on LinkedIn. Um, what you can do, um, if you go into your your personal control panel in LinkedIn, there are some um, there are some some tools and controls to turn off basically turn off your activity feed and turn off um, the fact that you're making changes to your profile. Or uh, there's I believe there's there's two or three options to be able to restrict uh, who can see what you know what you're doing basically. Uh, if you are making changes to your profile and you want to kind of be in stealth mode, you can certainly do that. I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head, but they are in your 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 LinkedIn profile, the inside of the control panel. Great. Um, CD asks, when a LinkedIn contact introduces me to a desired contact by CC in my personal email to her. How do I connect with a person I wanted to be introduced to with no connect request result? That's a, that's a long question. Um, so if I, so, so, I, um, so I, the way I understand that question was there was um, an exchange of email uh, and there is a way in LinkedIn, if you have a person's email address, um, there is a way to actually put in the person's actual email address to say, uh, you know, I tried to connect with you, but here is your email address. You can do that. Uh, and there also is a functionality inside of LinkedIn itself. Again, I don't remember where the menu options are, but it is part of LinkedIn, the, 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 the software. You can actually request a, uh, an introduction as part of LinkedIn. You can send a message to a contact of yours saying, hey, can you introduce me to person ABC, that, that type of thing. Great. So I see there are no other questions. Uh, Craig, thank you very much. That, that was some very interesting uh, ways to think about networking. I thank you very much. I learned a lot. Thanks for everybody for attending, everybody. Thanks for having me. Okay, thank you. And everyone, if, if you're interested, uh, the Pass Summit recordings are available at passboutique.com slash Pass Summit. So the sessions from the last Pass Summit are available and over there and professional development sessions also. So thanks everyone and see you next month. Thank you. Thanks again, Craig. It was a lot of fun. Thank you.